All right, so we're making a lot of uh, progress. So, so far, we've uh, seen how a user can log in and actually set the user ID using a session. Okay, so now how do we use this session to bring in the data for that particular user? So the first thing we have to do is to check if this ID actually even exists because somebody could manipulate our system and put in a wrong ID that doesn't exist and we might think they're actually logged in. Okay, now in order to do this as usual, we are going to use a, a class. So now since we already have a login class right here, we'll utilize the same class. All we have to do is simply add another function or what is called a method inside this class. That method is going to check for us if that ID is real and the user is logged in so they can be allowed access. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and you see this, this function here, the evaluate function starts from there and it ends there. So we need another function. Uh, this one is going to be a public function as well so we can access it from outside. So the function is going to be called check login. So we are checking if the user is logged in. So you can call it anything you want, whatever describes it better to you. So now it's public function. It's not just public, so it's going to be function like so. Check login and then let's do that. Now we have to ask ourselves, what do we need in order for us to check? Let me zoom in a little bit in order for us to check if the user is logged in. So we know that the information we are going to be provided is the user ID. So let's tell it to actually give us an ID. So we're going to ask for the ID in there. Okay, so you can call this variable anything. You can say user ID, ID, it doesn't matter because that's we know that's what we're going to pass in there. So to do this, we have to read from the database. Now, as you can remember from our previous uh, tutorials, in order for us to read from the database, this is the line we need. We need to create a DB object and say new database like that. And then we get a result from there. So it's this simple to read from the database. And we also need to create a query like this one. So I'm simply going to copy all these things here, these three things, because that's what I need. And I'm also, I also need to check if there was a result. So I'll get that part as well. So let me copy that to avoid typing. And then I need a closing bracket for this section, obviously. So like that. So what's happening is that we create a query and then we create the database uh, uh, object. And then we check to read from the query. If we get a result, we do something here. However, if we don't get a result here, let's return uh, something. So what do we return here? Let's return an error, for example, and say, now in this case, there are two things. We could return an error to the user. However, the problem with that is, imagine they open this uh, profile page and then it's going to show them an error. That error isn't very useful because the, it's still going to display an empty page here. So instead of doing that, we simply need to redirect the user when the record does not exist. Let's redirect them to the login page so they can actually log in instead. Okay. So if none of this is found, we are going to uh, now, we don't want to be redirecting people directly in the class itself. We'll be doing that from here, where there's HTML. For example, uh, what I did here, login, we redirect to the profile if there's no error. Okay, redirect there. However, in this case, if there's an error, that's when we redirect. So we're going to do that right there. So let me come back here and Let's finish up with this. So since we don't need to see an error of any kind, I'm just going to say return false. So on the other side, we'll, see, we'll simply be checking if the result is false, then there was no user, okay? Now, if the user was found, we have to return a true. You say, okay, the user was found. 
So all we need, we don't need to get the user ID. We already have that. We're simply checking to see if it's, uh, tr it's true or false that they exist in our system. All right. So what is the query we are going to have? We're going to say select ID. Okay. Now, in all the others, we've been uh, retrieving all the columns from our, uh, what's this? our database. So it's possible to simply retrieve one column by saying select user ID because that's all we need from users where email. Now we are not using the email here. We're using the ID which we are being passed in from the outside. So we're going to say where ID is equal to. Now the column in our website, in our uh, in our database is called user ID. Okay, we can check that by going to my, uh, if we go to MySQL here and I click, I click admin on the MySQL here, it's going to load in uh, the database here. So we can see what we're looking at in case, this is in case you get confused about what the columns are exactly. So, this is going to load it in. Now, while that is loading, we're going to go back here and do something more interesting. Or I could copy. I didn't know this was my default browser, which is different. So instead, I'm going to do that. And load it from here. Okay, there we go. So the database we're using is my book db so i'm going to click on the plus sign there to show me the columns and there's a column called users so if i go inside this uh or this table these are the records we have okay so we're going to delete some of these records because they were we used them for testing earlier but we'll leave this last one right here so this is the user id so the column is user id without a space so that's what we're checking for here. Select user ID. Okay. So if we get a result, then we're going to have that user ID here. So that's all we are checking for. If the result is there, then we're good to go. So where ID is equal to, okay. Actually where user ID, because the column here is user ID, we are checking that column. So we're going to say where user ID is equal to this particular ID here. Now, what I forgot to put here is the uh, the dollar sign like that to signify that this is actually a um, a variable. So let me put that variable in here. Now, since user ID is actually a number column, you don't need to put these uh, inverted commas like that, but it doesn't hurt to leave them. It's okay. It doesn't matter. And we limit one because we just want one record. Okay. So select user ID, which is this one, from users, which is the table, this table right there, where the user ID, which is the column, is equal to our ID that we've been given, limit one, okay? So once we get the result, if we have an actual result, good, if not, than false. Okay. So now all we need to do is go back to our login page or the profile page in this case. Now, if I go back to these uh, other pages here at the top, we have to include the connect and we have to include the class login because we're using those two. All right. So let me go back up profile here and hit paste those there. So if you notice a, uh, let me comment this one out, session start, and then we add our connect, uh, the database class, and then the login class, and then we can access some information here. So let's check. Now, first of all, we have to make sure that the, uh, this one is available before we try to use it. So this is the memory location here in session. So let's make sure that it's actually set. So in order to do that, check if user is logged in. 